uh, that are on a ship, a bulk carrier, uh, off the west of Cape York. So we're managing that at the moment and Dr Young will have a bit more to say about that shortly. But wonderful news to have zero community cases again. Uh, this means we are at 31 active cases. Uh, great news in relation to our vaccinations, 14,998 uh, tests. Uh, should I say overnight? So almost 15,000 people coming out and getting tested. Thank you so much. Uh, the message is clear. No matter where you are in Queensland, if you have any symptoms whatsoever, please come and get tested. And our vaccination rates: we did 20,559 vaccines yesterday in Queensland Health, and over the entire state, because Queensland Health. Uh, our GPs and our community pharmacies, we have now delivered over 5 million doses. Uh, so that is wonderful, but of course we want those numbers to keep going up. So today we have 68.26% uh, of the Queensland eligible population have had their first dose and 49.53% second dose. So we are so close to that 50% mark being fully vaccinated. So keep up the great work. Uh, Queenslanders keep coming out and getting tested and of course getting vaccinated. That is the key to keeping us all safe. Now this weekend we are expecting a very big Supervax weekend because everyone who came out in their thousands three weeks ago are all due for their second dose. So we know that you need to have your second dose and two weeks after that you get that full protection. So it's so important that if you haven't booked in for this weekend, you can still walk in and get your second jab. And of course, you can turn up for your first jab as well. Now, to help those communities that have lower vaccination rates, we are standing up 19 high schools. So these are your local high school across 17, uh, 19 areas where we've had lower vaccination rates, where you'll be able to walk in on the weekend and get a vaccination. So particularly, can I put a shout out to those schools' communities, your students, the parents, the grandparents, the siblings of those students at those schools. Here's the chance. Pop in to your local high school and get that vaccination this weekend. You can find those 19 high schools up on our website. It'll have uh, the hours and the days. Most of them will be open Saturday and Sunday. But have a look at what hours. And here in Mackay, we'll have the Mackay Northern Beaches High School, which will be open on Saturday for vaccinations, as well as, of course, the showgrounds and local community pharmacies and GPs. Now, I also want to mention uh, home quarantining. So we have uh, now moved to trialling home quarantine for returning Queenslanders. Now, this will commence from the 11th of October next week. We've already started reaching out to Queenslanders stuck into state who have already applied to return to Queensland. So it doesn't apply to someone who today jumps on a plane and goes down south. These are people who are already stuck in New South Wales and Victoria and the ACT. Uh, we are reaching out to them and asking if they meet a certain criteria, then we will invite up to a thousand people to be able to home quarantine instead of hotel quarantine from the 11th of October. Now, the key criteria that must be met, you must have had at least two weeks passed since your second vaccination. So if you are stuck interstate and haven't been vaccinated yet, hurry up and get vaccinated if you want the opportunity to home quarantine going forward. You must have had two doses. It must be two weeks since you've had your second dose. You also must reside within two hours of the Brisbane airport. Uh, if you can't reside alone, then the whole household will need to quarantine. You will be bound by the testing and home quarantine check-in uh, system that we have put in place. Uh, so these are the requirements that you will have to meet uh, to be eligible to home quarantine. Uh, also, you must have had a negative test within 72 hours uh, before you travel. So, vaccinate, negative test, reside within two hours of Brisbane Airport and be able to quarantine alone or have the whole household quarantine are the key criteria to becoming eligible. Uh, we will re-evaluate this in a couple of weeks uh, to see the success. Now, if people are found to be in breach, 
then they can be fined and they can be told they, they must go into hotel quarantine and have to pay the cost of that hotel quarantine. Now, why are we here in Mackay? Well, Mackay is one of those towns where we are seeing lower vaccination rates. We don't want to see any town in Queensland left behind. Because when this virus comes to our communities, and it will come, we cannot have towns like Mackay become ground zero for the virus. It will be your local hospitals that have to deal with all those positive cases. It will be your schools that will have the outbreak across the students. It will be your industries, the resource and the tourism sector, that will be impacted by their staff who are sick and having to go into hospital or quarantining. So please come out and get vaccinated. This is as real as it gets. New South Wales has had over 60,000 cases in three months from one person on the 16th of June. 60,000 cases. That is half of the population of Mackay. Half of Mackay's population in just three months from one case in New South Wales. And sadly, they have reported over 351 deaths. We don't want to see that happen in towns like Mackay, Rockhampton or Mount Isa or our remote indigenous communities or areas like Ipswich or Logan or Bow Desert. We need everyone stepping up and getting vaccinated because we want everyone to be as safe as possible to protect you, to protect your loved ones, your work colleagues, your community and to also help our health workers who are going to have to manage all of these positive cases when this virus does come. Now I hand over to Dr Young uh, to just give an update on these positive cases on this bulk carrier. We'll also hear from Julianne Gilbert, our local member, and I'm pleased to say the Mayor's joined us as well today, so I will also hear from the Mayor here in Mackay. Thank you. Dr Young. Thank you very much, Minister. So yes, we have six new cases in Queensland today, but all six overseas acquired. One of them was detected in hotel quarantine in a traveller who'd recently returned from Scotland. The other five were detected on a ship off the coast, the western coast of Cape York. And the name of the ship, I'll just have to check, is the Imabari Queen Bulk Carrier. So we're just working with that ship at the moment as to how sick those individuals are, so whether or not we've got to get them off the ship or whether they can be managed on the ship. So, but they're of no risk at all to the community of Queensland. So that is great news that we don't have any locally acquired cases. But the only thing that's going to stop us getting locally acquired cases going forward, we know, is vaccination. So every single day we are seeing Queenslanders come forward and get vaccinated, which is fantastic. We just need to accelerate it because I really and truly want us all to have the chance to have been vaccinated before the virus gets into Queensland and spread. So we've been very fortunate due to the fantastic work by Queenslanders to date that we haven't seen spread of the virus, but it will start spreading. We can't stop it. The only way to stop it is vaccination. So please, there are so many places you can now get vaccinated. We have plenty of vaccine. So you can go into pharmacies, you can go see your GP, you can come into many of our clinics. I'm here outside the one at the Mackay Showgrounds, which is doing a fantastic job and looks like it's heading up for a busy day, which is perfect. Well, we have got lots of places to get vaccinated. Please don't wait come forward because the problem with this vaccine is it does take five weeks from your first dose of Pfizer to be fully protected. It takes six weeks from your first dose of Moderna. So no one knows where we'll be in five or six weeks time. So come out today and get your first dose and make sure in three weeks time, get your second dose of Pfizer. In four weeks time, you get your second dose of Moderna. Thank you. I hope to see, but let's wait. Let's not jump ahead of ourselves. We've got a trial starting on Monday with 1,000 returning Queenslanders, and we will see how that trial goes. But I would strongly recommend that anyone who would like to be part of the process going forward, go and get vaccinated, because you need to have had two doses of vaccine plus an extra two weeks. 
So as we gradually do look at this, if it is successful, that will be one of the criteria. There'll be a number of other criteria, but that's the one that will delay you if you don't do it. I guess, why would the trial in places like Cairns and Townsville as well, which have those direct flights to interstate locations like Sydney and Melbourne? Yeah, because the other thing that I'm looking at as well is not just making sure that the person who's coming from interstate is vaccinated, but that to make it safer that the community around them is vaccinated and we know we've got higher vaccine rates at this point in time in Brisbane. So that's why we're really looking at Brisbane. We've also got our hospitals have had a lot of experience with COVID cases in Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast. So at the moment we are restricting it. It's a trial and we'll see how it goes. We're restricting it to those LGAs in Brisbane. I'll just hear from Julianne, the Mayor, and then we'll take okay. um, Good morning, everyone, and how great is it to have our Chief Health Officer, Dr Jeanette Young, travelling to Mackay with the Health Minister, Yvette Darth. The strong message here today for regional Queensland is that this virus is not a southeast corner virus. At any time, it could spread out to the region, so don't be complacent. Get out to your... Um, vaccination hubs and make sure that you get your vaccinations. It is fantastic that we have got a high school over the north side of Mackay out at Mackay Northern Beaches this weekend on Saturday. Roll up, get your jab, any of your children from 12 and over, take them with you and make sure that we get our community safe. As you've heard, um, people keep knocking on my door, ringing my office saying, when can we home quarantine? Just look at the numbers in regional Queensland with the rate of vaccination. If you want your family and friends to be able to home quarantine, do the right thing, get your jab so that we can start rolling out programs like that across Queensland. So this is up to every Queenslander to keep Queensland safe. Get out there, get your jab. There is a very small window of opportunity to keep yourself safe because we do not know when we were going to get that one person that started the um, all of those cases in New South Wales that could potentially happen here in Queensland. And there is not one person in my community that I want to see um, get COVID. So get out, roll up your sleeve, get jabbed. Thank you, Minister and uh, Dr Young. It's great to have uh, the Minister and Dr Young in Mackay today. Both the Minister and uh, Dr Young have said, please go and get vaccinated. I think we're past saying please. You've heard where we are on the state averages. We're still 11 percentage points behind the state averages for vaccination. We've said time and time again, the end result for us when Queensland opens up or Australia opens up, if we cannot handle the 20 per cent or more that are unvaccinated in our community, the only option is lockdown. We don't need to go from hero to zero. We need to get out there now and get vaccinated. The government, the health department, uh, the school system, they're doing the absolute best this week, this weekend, to make sure there's an availability for all of our residents to get vaccinated. You need to do that now. There is no further option. We are at that critical point in our community of saying, we're not saying please anymore, we're saying it's your duty as a Queenslander, as a Mackay Region citizen, to get out there and get vaccinated. Because if you don't, you will be placing on our hospital system the onerous task of them being able to actually say who, who gets the bed, who doesn't, who gets a ventilator, who doesn't, who dies or who doesn't. That's where it's going. And so we, we, we don't need to be beating about the bush anymore around this. It is a very serious situation we are facing in our community because we are so far behind in terms of our vaccination. And we're behind because, as a community, it hasn't been here. It hasn't been here since April last year. And you, you don't realise how many people have been putting in such a huge effort to keep this community safe. Dr Young has made a huge effort in this community, both with the fly-in, fly-out workforce, with the ships off Haypoint and Dalrymple Bay. We've had numerous episodes where we've been, we've been very, very close. So it's not we're lucky. It's not got anything to do with the water we drink or the sunshine. It's because a lot of people have put a lot of effort into keeping our community safe. Now we're at the critical point. You just need to go and get vaccinated. Minister, on the um, stuff, yeah, I know 
Yeah. But is there an indication that it could be used um, for overseas uh, return people as well? And could this also make it that these purpose built quarantine facilities redundant down the track? Uh, look, uh, firstly on international rivals, National Cabinet's already agreed to trial home quarantine for international rivals. Uh, that's being done in South Australia now, so we will watch very closely how that trial goes. Uh, it's really important to understand uh, you know, whether people who are coming are fully vaccinated or not, uh, whether what day they're testing positive, if they are bringing the virus in, uh, making sure that we are still keeping the community as safe as we possibly can. Uh, so those things are really, really important and we need to make sure that we are uh, watching that trial closely. Uh, and sorry, just picking up on your second uh, question. Will, could this uh, make uh, purpose-built facilities? Uh, look, as far as the purpose-built facilities uh, such as WorldCamp, uh, no, they're not going to be made redundant. Hopefully one day they will be redundant when it comes to COVID. But these facilities will be used for a whole lot of other things because they're in booming areas uh, that can utilise those facilities, whether it's uh, uh, you know overseas workers coming in to work on our farms, whether it's uh, international students, a whole range of things. But right now, what we know is um, we do need to quarantine people. Uh, we've set a pretty strict criteria for these people, up to a thousand people, to be able to home quarantine. Not everyone's going to meet that criteria. Uh, so we want to make sure that people are still able to come into Queensland, whether it's Queensland residents or people seeking exemptions uh, you know, for hardship reasons and so forth. So we need to still have capacity to quarantine these people. And if we can't do it safely at home, we need other facilities. Look, I, put, I think uh, the Mayor uh, did it, said it so well. Uh, because we have been so successful in keeping this virus out of our communities, and particularly out of the regions, uh, a lot of people are feeling very safe. They think they can wait. The public think, oh no, we don't have any outbreaks like New South Wales and Victoria. We're okay, I can take my time. But while they, in now New South Wales and ACT and Victoria, are fighting so hard to get this under control and to get their vaccination rates up, we should be getting ahead of the virus. We should be getting protected now. Not waiting till people are in ICU beds, not waiting till they're in our hospitals. In New South Wales, people have died at home from COVID. Let's not have this happen in our community. Get out and get vaccinated now. Don't wait, this virus will come. It will absolutely come. It will come to Mackay, it will come to Rockhampton, it will come to Early Beach and Proserpine and Bowen. It'll come to every town and city uh, across Queensland and across Australia. The question is, how prepared are you for that? Need to get vaccinated now. Is it the case that without a clear date for reopening Queensland, that that's, leading to, that's not putting pressure on people to get vaccinated, whereas if there was a date to reopen, that would put pressure on people to go out and get vaccinated? Well, let's, let's reverse that argument. The quicker you get vaccinated, the quicker we can get back to enjoying our lifestyle and opening our economy fully up as we had enjoyed prior to 2020. So it's up to you, up to each and every Queenslander who is eligible to get a vaccine. You get to decide how quickly we get to those targets. We can only do so much. We'll provide the facilities, we'll provide the vaccine, we'll provide the incredible health workers to get that vaccine in your arm, but you've got to turn up and get vaccinated. It's up to you, Queenslanders. How quickly do you want to see us open up? Uh, look, this issue hasn't been raised with me. Um, you know, uh, when it comes to maternity services, uh, we can pretty well plan for these. But we know when the baby's coming. Uh, so it's not a problem that happens overnight. Uh, we do have, uh, being a north sider myself in Redcliffe Hospital, uh, we certainly punch above our weight. We've got well above the state average when it comes to birthing. 
uh, and we have amazing hospitals that deliver those maternity services. So Sunshine Coast University Hospital have great facilities there, as do all of our hospitals um, yeah, in that area, and I have no doubt that they'll be managing any surges in those demands. Is there a recommended city at all um, that we may have to pay for COVID tests unless we're Oh look, those, um, those things aren't being considered at this time. Uh, our testing system in Australia, and particularly here in Queensland, uh, is second to none. Uh, and you know, we use the testing system we do currently because it's the most accurate testing system. As we go forward, we may see changes in what becomes the new norm living with COVID. But right now, uh, our testing system uh, is incredibly efficient uh, we have very quick turnaround with tests uh, and the accuracy of those tests are, as I say, second to none. So it's really important uh, that we keep using that system uh, in the short to medium term and people keep coming out and getting tested. Uh, the Premier is not the Premier is not fronting the media today because the Chief Health Officer and I are here in Mackay uh, doing the COVID update and uh, the Premier uh, considered uh, that it would be appropriate that the Chief Health Officer uh, deliver our message on our COVID numbers every day and we're able to explain uh, those overseas cases. So I uh, know if the Premier was here in Mackay with us, I'm sure she'd be standing up with us. If we were all in Brisbane, we'd all be standing up together. And how can the government say it's committed about transparency when businesses shell out $5,500 for access to the Premier and her um, the only way you do you know that happens is because uh, we have full transparency. We are so proud of our electoral laws in this state. In fact, our electoral laws and transparency around political donations is leading the country. We have the best in the country. Right now, someone could walk into a federal member's office and hand over $14,000 in cash and it doesn't have to be disclosed. Just think about that. $14,000 of cash and it doesn't even have to be disclosed. Here in Queensland, a donation of $1,000 or more has to be disclosed and it's disclosed real time. Within seven days, you know that donation's been made and you know who it's been made to and you know who's made that donation. So we have the strongest laws in the country. What I'd love to see is every other state and particularly the Commonwealth to bring their electoral laws into line with Queensland and have full transparency on donations. I'll also remind Queenslanders we've changed the laws. In 12 months' time, there won't be those sort of cash for access um, functions at all because we will be switching over to the new system uh, where there is very limited donations allowed to be given to individuals and political parties. Well, we are doing something. We're building uh, seven satellite hospitals in southeast Queensland, uh, which will see people diverted away from our emergency departments and our hospitals. Uh, that is the model that we are adopting that we know will make a real difference and taking those services into the community. Now, I appreciate that there's private practices out there uh, who uh, do seek government funds uh, to uh, provide their services. But we have a limited bucket of money. Our funding has to go into our public health system. It should be the Commonwealth who is stepping up and supporting the primary and allied health care sectors. Because where there's market failure there, where there's no GP that you can see, that's wait times of weeks to see a GP, that there's no bulk billing, there's no specialists in their town, there's no psychologist or psychiatrist that you can see. Where do all those people end up? In our EDs, being called and picked up by our ambulances and taking up our hospital beds. So we need aged care, disability, allied primary health care, more support for our GPs in our regions, more GPs in our regions. That's how we can help our public health system. Hurry up and make the announcement. Uh, it's killing me. I can't wait any longer. I need to know. It's got to be dolphins. Please, NOL, put us out of our misery. Stand up today. I'll be happy. 
and announced the Dolphins as the next NRL team. Uh, do you support the uh, vaccine against the hospitality? Sorry, I can't hear you. Look, those are discussions. Um, discussions. Uh, the question of whether we should mandate uh, in other business areas and other sectors. We've mandated it for our health workforce and our aged care workforce. That's the right thing to do because we want to keep our health workforce uh, protected, and we also need to make sure we've got the people turning up to their jobs and not sick with COVID. But we also need to protect the most vulnerable, and that is our patients and residents coming into aged care. Um, it is, and it should be, a national decision as to whether that's expanded to other sectors. I understand some employers are wanting to bring this in. Um, they want to protect their own workforce and they want to protect their customers uh, and the public. Uh, but that really should be a decision uh, that is made at a national level so we have consistency across the country. Um, on ambulance revenue, the LMP are speaking about it again today. We saw um, a number of hospitals up north here go code yellow mm -hmm. yesterday. Um, are we is there still a lot of work to be done to, I guess, fix what seems to be an issue with the ambulance ramp in our hospital? Well, ambulance ramp because there is not enough bed capacities in our hospitals. So people get clogged up in emergency departments because there isn't the beds available. Why are there no beds available? Because we have 600 people today in our Queensland hospitals uh, that should be in the community with a disability package, that should be in an aged care facility or cared for at home uh, with aged care support. Uh, these are not people who need treatment in a hospital. They are people who should be having a better quality of life in the community. That is the sole responsibility of the Commonwealth. But also, we've got increase in mental health attendance. We have more complexity uh, with our seniors. Uh, we need to make sure that people can go see their doctors, go get allied health support and treatment before it ends up critical because when they can't get those services in their community, and Mackay knows this, you know, all across your region, you know there is not enough GPs and allied health care in your communities. Where do those people go? They call an ambulance or they walk into our emergency departments. So we need to work together. We need the Commonwealth working with us. The Commonwealth, in refusing to provide any further support to states and territories in the health se health care sector, says one of two things. They're ignorant or they're arrogant. Ignorant because they either don't understand that there is a market failure with primary and allied health care across this country that is putting pressure on our public hospitals, or they're arrogant because they don't care and they don't think they have any role in helping us manage these issues. Uh, either way, it's not good enough. It's letting down Australians. It's letting down Queenslanders. I'm extremely disappointed in Scott Morrison's response. And Every health minister will be disappointed in seeing the response we got yesterday, which is, no, we're not going to help you anymore, just when we're trying to open up our country and make sure that our health care system can provide the care it needs. Can I ask, how likely is it that Queensland will get the 50% double dose rates today? I hope it happens. I definitely do that we reach 50%, but it's actually not in my hands. It's in everyone else's hands because we've got the vaccine. We can ex go way beyond that. We've got the resources, the clinics like this one here. It's up to Queenslanders to come forward and get a jab in their arm. Uh, oh, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, um, uh, BHP's indicated that they're going to put in a mandate for workers won't be allowed on site unless they're vaccinated or done a vaccination process. We're obviously the mining community as we get up yeah. north. Is that good to see, I suppose, that we're seeing even our largest companies taking that initiative uh, as well. We're really trying to push for new vaccinations. Yeah, can I say the resource sector in Queensland has been brilliant from day one. They have worked with me so well and I'll give them ideas and they just have run with them right from day one. And that's why we've not seen an outbreak in any of our mining areas. It's been amazing to see, it really has. And they have always been determined to keep the communities that they work in safe. So they might be in a mine, but they're then worried about the local community that supports that mine. 
and they've done a wonderful job. And yet again, they're doing a wonderful job. So right from the start, when the first vaccines were available, they were knocking on my door saying, please, could we have vaccine for our fly and fly out workers? But it was on the proviso that there was also vaccine for the local town. They didn't want to see that they were going to take away anything from the local community. So wonderful work by them yet again. What population threshold would, be, would you be comfortable reopening state borders? 90%, 95%? Yeah, what threshold? I, it's easy. That's a really easy question. Thank you for answering it yet again. I want every single Queenslander who's 12 years of age or older to have been given the chance to get vaccinated. Then I believe this is people's choice. I just hope they choose the vaccine. And that's once that's happened, then I think we have the discussion when about you, is that enough? When do you decide though when that everyone's had the chance? Well, I don't think everyone has. We've really only had that large amount of vaccine available for the last couple of weeks. So I always thought it was going to be end of September, going into October, that we'd be able to do that really big push. And that's what's happened. So enough? today we've got lots of vaccine. I want to be I want to be absolutely surprised and amazed on Monday with the number. I just want it to be as high as it can possibly be. Thank you. Yes, of course. Of course we're going to see more schools because I think schools are a great place to get vaccinated. Every school Every community, not quite some of the very small ones, but we've got other processes for there. Any community of any degree of size has got a local high school with a hall. So we'll be looking at that and we'll be working that through. Thank you. Yeah, there wasn't any risk there. Um, that, I mean, Townsville is a fantastic public health unit. They are really, really good at what they do and they worked out the risk. So there weren't any issues, but they were very cautious and worked it through. Thank you. Thank you.